Hey, good morning to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. Obviously, Marco and Laura, the topics of the day and for the next several days. Uh, I am in Gulfport, Mississippi, getting ready to head out in just a little while to begin setting up the equipment in anticipation of landfall for what could be Hurricane Marco. It's almost a hurricane now. So what I'm going to do right now is go over the latest, what we know uh, from the available data from the National Hurricane Center, and uh, then we're going to take a look at our plans for Marco. I will obviously look at Laura just a little bit, but I think Laura is best described as being on deck uh, coming soon and all that that implies. The early morning satellite here, this is the infrared satellite. It shows us the colors represent cloud top temperatures. And the higher up the scale you go over here, the colder the cloud tops are. And when you have cold cloud tops, that's usually indicative of deep convection or thunderstorm activity. And we see that pretty prevalently here uh, with Marco today. Uh, this is a pretty decent band that's setting up over here on the east side. I'm trying to find the right color to help all this pop better. Pretty good band setting up on the east side. That's in indicating to me <clears throat> that good inflow is taking place, and it's not good in, in, if you don't want it to strengthen, but healthy for the structure of Marco there. Uh, big inflow band coming in. And then even in the infrared here, you can see this fast rotation around the center. Uh, Hurricane Hunter is indicating that this is strengthening. There is some outflow here. You can see the way that the air moves out and uh, kind of sheared up here on the north side, though, so it's not in an ideal environment in terms of the wind patterns. Uh, but the water temperatures, as you know, are very warm all along the path up here to landfall. So water temperatures are not going to be a big hindrance at all. They'll just do nothing but help. Uh, looking at, speaking of outflow, geez, looking at Laura here, the outflow is extraordinary. And the only thing holding this back is Hispaniola. And despite that, uh, you can see Laura doing a pretty good job maintaining deep convection. You know, we thought that Hispaniola was the shredder of tropical cyclones. And then, you know, we saw with Isaias, it became a hurricane after passing over Dominican Republic. I mean, that's not very typical to see. And then here with Laura, it's, you know, maintaining and, and the structure of it's just really, really impressive. And even though we're going to deal with Marco first and we're not going to underplay and downplay the effects of Marco, uh, Laura is going to come along and potentially be a historic hurricane down the road, uh, I, I'm afraid. So uh, close up here of uh, Marco. And again, this feeder band that's trying to get going on the east side is showing me that this still has a chance here to become a hurricane and we'll just have to see how quickly it can ramp up and stay organized as it moves off to the northwest and north and eventually bends back to the west some over time. Um, we can see on the, is this the track map? Yep. That it's forecast to make landfall uh, the center of it, not far from Grand Isle, Louisiana, but to the east of there, there will be quite a bit of impact. Uh, storm surge and flooding rain, maybe hurricane force wind. Uh, if you live down here, you know, and this is a regular thing. We have to deal with hurricanes, and this is the second landfall for you folks this year. We had Cristobal earlier, back in June. I was down here for that. And the Gulf has recovered water temperature wise all through here, very, very warm. And now we have to face the prospect here of Marco coming in. And again, this is the center. These little dots here with H's, that represents the center. We know that the wind and the storm surge will extend away from the center. This orange area right down here, I'll zoom in on it. Just in case you don't know what these different things mean, this little orange, uh, not blob, but here I'll outline it in white. This area here 
that would be your area of tropical storm force winds. So it's not a large wind field because Marco is not a large system. And that's the good thing. The effects will be relatively limited. But the problem is, as it approaches the coast up here, uh, this angle of attack, if you will, all of this area in this right front quadrant will receive the brunt of surge, the onshore flow, the bands that come in. Um, you might see the possibility of water spouts and maybe some tornadoes, flooding rain. I mean, this is definitely going to have impacts. And the biggest impact in terms of threat to life, and this has increased recently since last night, uh, is the storm surge. And storm surge is simply the water being pushed ashore by the wind field. Think if you had a cup of coffee and you blew across the top of it, you are literally piling up the coffee on the opposite side of the cup from where your lips are as you blow across that surface. That's storm surge. And as Marco comes in, uh, again, the landfall down here, somewhere near Grand Isle perhaps, uh, everything in that right front quadrant over here, the water just gets efficiently piled up all into this area because of that onshore flow so that the Mississippi Sound, Lake Bourne, all the areas down in the toe of Louisiana and, you know, getting trapped into these different concave coastlines, the water gets pushed in there. We could see as much as six feet of surge in some areas you get higher than that you get these little surprise areas where the water can come up another two feet or so and this also includes the two lakes north of new orleans and i'm going to put a camera i'm going to talk about this in a minute uh in mandeville so lake uh, and i've learned how to say it now morapa and lake uh, pontchartrain especially on those north sides up here um, as this comes in, the north side of both of these lakes, the water will pile up the most efficiently there. And if you know Mandeville, you know that area is very susceptible. So the wind field, the track, and the organization of Marco and how it comes in, you know, does it come in more over here? Is it more to the west? We're going to have to really watch that. But this gives us an idea of the storm surge, and that two to four feet extends all the way over to Sabine Pass. You know, so please take this very seriously, even Mobile Bay, possibly two to four feet. And the increase in the wave action that's going to come up here starting today and through tomorrow, people are still down enjoying the beach from time to time. Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, the Gulf uh, of Mexico beaches in Mississippi, please be mindful of that, that increase in surf. We don't need anybody killed or injured um, in the surf. All right, I'll talk about that with Atlantic hurricanes. It's the same in the Gulf of Mexico. Please treat this with a lot of respect. All right, I'm trying to keep you safe here. Next up, of course, will be Laura, and we're going to deal with this more, obviously, in the coming days. But this gives you an idea. Tracking over the Greater Antilles now and eventually popping out in the southeast Gulf of Mexico where it's going to have a couple of days to possibly intensify into a powerful hurricane. And where this makes landfall, it could be really, really bad. Um, and, you know, sometimes the modeling, just to talk about that for a second, instead of just going over each model, I think that's, at this point in time, not very helpful. The guidance is suggesting anywhere from southwest Louisiana to the upper Texas coast for a landfall, the Euro, the GFS, and it's all going to depend on how strong that Western Atlantic Ridge is, and this is coming in around that. If the ridge is slightly larger, it pushes the cone and the track out a little bit, not that dramatic, but it's all going to come down to that ridge. And just real quick, when we talk about the ridge, um, think of it like a big water balloon in the atmosphere and that balloon can expand and contract it can expand and contract it can change its shape it's very amorphous and things can impinge on it uh, but it is a liquid the atmosphere is dynamically it's fluid okay it's not a liquid like water 
but it is a fluid. That's why we call it fluid dynamics. And so that big high pressure area can expand, like breathe in, and it can contract, like breathing out. Uh, and we call that, we, we look at that measured with what are called heights. How high, what are the heights in the atmosphere? <clears throat> so if it's just a little bit larger, then the track's more west towards Houston, Galveston, and Port Arthur, that area, all right? The upper Texas coast, Bolivar High Island. If the ridge is slightly smaller, or if it moves, you know, if not only does the shape matter, but where the ridge axis is, you know. So these are all things that we, we don't know today. Uh, and we're going to figure those out. So my advice is from Vermilion Bay over to Freeport, Texas. You need to be watching Laura extremely close like your life depends on it, because it does. Laura is going to be a major, major event, I do believe. Uh, the models are showing us that. And they've been showing us that, the hurricane models, they were just a little bit off, understandably, right? That they thought perhaps, especially the H. Wharf and H. Mon, that Laura would come through this way and be very powerful through here. And what's holding that back, honestly, is the land. If it wasn't for the land interaction, those models would have been correct on the intensity side. And that was showing us the way. It was. Uh, the global models didn't see it. The hurricane models did, and the only difference is land. So I'm going to say kudos to the H Wharf and the H Mon because they know what was coming. They just didn't have the track right, and that matters. That the intensity part was spot on because dog on it. Uh, look at where where'd it go? There it is. Look at that. That satellite image here. The only thing holding this back is Hispaniola. Uh, going over to the larger image. Wow, that outflow. I'm telling you folks, and the models showed us that. And just one more point about that. If you move Laura up here, instead of where it is now, and it was moving along that trajectory like the H Wharf and the H Mon were showing, it would be a completely different ball game, and this would be well on its way to a major hurricane, and the intense hurricane that you saw in there would have verified. Case closed. It's just a matter of land interaction. The environment is what the models saw, and that is coming to fruition right in front of our eyes. Wow. So please, get ready for Laura. Uh, you don't need me to tell you that. You know what's coming. All right. Our plans for today. Uh, luckily, I've got a great crew. I've got Mike Farrow helping me. He's a good friend of mine. known him for more than 20 years. He's from Wilmington, North Carolina, like me. Brent has flown up from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Brent is one of our highest level patrons. He is in the position to fund a lot of what we're doing and dedicate his time and energy and his talents. Um, he's not just a roadie. The guy really helps with graphics, logistics. I mean, he's amazing. I got very lucky. So Brent is helping out with me and with me and Mike. Bad grammar, but... Anyway, and then we're going to meet up later this morning in just a little while with Greg Nordstrom. I've known him since 2011. Uh, he is an instructor of meteorology from Mississippi State University, and he lives in Gulfport with his wife, Taylor, who, of course, is a meteorologist with WLOX Television, in case you didn't know. That is Greg's wife. She is. Um, and so the four of us, Taylor's working, and uh, so the four of us uh, are going to set up our equipment. And so what I've done is I've created this little indicator map to show you where we plan on doing this. And I know we're going to put a camera in the old reliable golf port. We're going to put a camera over here in Waveland. And we may put some more along 90. We'll see. But these are definite because I know exactly where they're going to go. We're going to put one in Mandeville in pretty much the same area that I had it uh, for Cristobal. But this one in Mandeville, we're going to try something different. We're going to be able to stream two cameras off of one hotspot, and we're going to test that and see how that goes. So we're going to have one camera uh, facing west and another camera facing east at the exact same spot. That is going to be pretty kick butt. All right? It is, and I can't wait to try that. 
and see how that works. So you get a two for one deal there. Then we're going to put another camera down in Grand Isle and uh, never been there. Looking forward to that. And then another one probably somewhere over here along 90, um, somewhere near Richland, north of Homa. We'll see, just somewhere in that vicinity, because this will capture all of the effects there of storm surge uh, in this region and whatever happens just inland. And it looks like Marco is going to come in during the day, so that will be very helpful uh, to be able to see what's happening. We will also deploy a couple of weather stations very high-end weather stations. And when I say weather station, uh, I'm talking about the full package, the anemometer, which measures wind speed, and the pressure sensor that measures air pressure, obviously. That being said, that's the complete weather stations. We have three of them, and these are very, very high-end scientific weather stations from RM Young Corporation. I mean, they're the best you can buy. Uh, we have three. We'll put two out for Marco, maybe the third one. We'll see. Uh, and then we're going to put pressure sensors in all of these other locations as well. We have these nice little uh, drop units that they're called. They look like a little teardrop from Kestrel. And pretty much every one of them was purchased and donated to us. And I say us because it is about all of us. I'm just the front man here. By our supporters. I'm not kidding you. Matthew, Pete. You know, others have donated equipment to us over time. Um, and I'm trying to think of other people. I don't want to leave anybody off uh, my mind. You know, it's early in the morning still, but those are the names that come to mind. Um, lots of our patrons have chipped in over time. Uh, Chris out in Seattle. I'm just trying to think of everybody. Um, I got to go through my list. And, and I should do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally call people out in a positive way. The Internet's used too often to call people out for doing bad things. Uh, but these incredibly generous people are arming us with the tools to not only show you what this looks like visually, and we all want to see it. You know, news crews are going to be down there, and they do as good a job as they can. We're going to show it to you in an immersive situation. And I want to do the same with the data. And so collecting pressure data throughout this entire area will be really amazing. And we'll have wind instruments in here as well. Uh, and all of that is crowdfunded through our Patreon support. And when I talk about this, that's what that is. So briefly, you can become a member of the club, so to speak. But you're more than just a member. You're an investor in the here and now. It helps with the expenses. This is going to cost over $3,000, if not more, just for this field mission. And you know, where do you think that money comes from? <laughs> All right, so it comes from these folks uh, on Patreon. There I am. I'm the leader of the band, so to speak. You know, if all of my social media following pitched in a dollar a month, $12 a year, wow, I could literally start a new corporation and we would revolutionize Internet weather coverage. I'm serious, because we'd be talking about over $50,000 a month. And I'm dead serious. Can you imagine what we would do with that kind of revenue? The people that I could hire, the company that I could form, I am absolutely serious, and I'm going to push it, because we're going to get there. The $10 a month gets you the keys to the kingdom, so to speak. All of our uh, camera systems, it's all at the $10. I mean, come on. Annually, that's only $120 a year. And the good thing about Patreon, you can name your own price if you want to do $15 or $12 or $10.87 or $3, you know, or anything in between. And you can scale down. You know, maybe you need to go down to a dollar later on. Whatever. I just want to build this up <clears throat> so that we have a sustaining group of people like public radio does where we get to the point where I have a staff, oh my gosh, and we'll talk about this more later, I'm getting ahead of myself, and we're doing great though, believe me, I'm very excited about it. And then, uh, we're pretty much out of time to start sending people maps, but at the $25 level, I'll send you one of our tracking maps, and you get your name, if you stay with us for six months, at least six months, you get your name in the end credits of an upcoming Season 2 of the Hurricane Highway. And you can read these descriptions yourself. 
Uh, but this is how we do it, and this is where you log in, right there, on the homepage of HurricaneTrack.com. When you have an email address through Patreon, that's how you sign up to Patreon. You put that email address here, and you log in, and you go here. And you got all these tools. These are all of our patrons right here. There they are. These are real people. This is them, right? These are them. Link chats, etc. We got our live stuff. My Twitter feed's over here. And then you click on something like the tracking tools. Oh, yeah. There you go. This is what it looks like. The amazing ultimate tracking map. This put together by one of our patrons. Pro bono. Will Woodgate. Over in the UK. For real. He coded this up. Working with my really good friend Jason Sikotsky from North Carolina. From Cary. Uh, and uh, Howard Simons, I guess his last name. I've never had to say it before. But Howard from Bermuda. They all collaborated together. And worked to put this together, and you go, it's a tracking map, big whoop de doo Well, tracking maps don't have this, <laughs> right? And wait until you see what we do along the Mississippi coast down here and the Louisiana coast. Uh, we can turn off the different layers and see just uh, the cameras once they are set up, and I'm telling you, it is going to be remarkable uh, I have a little spreadsheet, and each camera comes online as I put that in. This is just representative. And this all gets populated with these cameras. And what does that look like? You know, what do you mean, the cameras? Well, here's our permanent one up in Rodanthe along the North Carolina Outer Banks. And if the bandwidth will cooperate here at the hotel, <sighs> it's the bandwidth. Um, these cameras pop up, and maybe I'm not connected to the Internet on my computer anymore. That could be the problem. Um, they do work, I promise. Uh, and it is. Sometimes my Internet connection drops at these hotels. That's fine. But you get the idea, and you can change the map extent and uh, what it looks like. It's even street level. Yes, this is what you get if you become uh, a, a supporter. And I hate that we have to have a paywall. I do. But how else am I going to fund it? And in return, that's how you get access to some of the greatest weather coverage anywhere in the world. Immersive, scientific-based, that's what that means, you know, crowdfunded science. This graphic here created from one of our patrons, uh, Kari, over in the UK. Living it up in the UK, man. A shout-out to you folks. Big help. So that's what we're doing. That's what's going on in the tropics. That's how you can get involved. The link to sign up on Patreon is on the homepage of HurricaneTrack.com and in the description of the video, all right? So there you go. I will be live in just a little while. We're going to use our 360 cam today, hopefully, if it works well. And, yeah, 360-degree live video, for real, from the vehicle. That is amazing if you've never seen it. So if you're a VR person, a gamer, get your headset, your Oculus Quest ready. It is going to be publicly available on YouTube so you should be able to watch it through the YouTube app on your VR headset. The future of online weather, live 360 video, I'm telling you, it's different. But boy, it's really neat because it immerses you in the vehicle with us like you cannot even fathom. And on your smartphone, your computer, uh, you can move the shot around in full 360. And on a VR headset, you can literally... It's like you're there with us, especially if you put on the headphones with it. Oh, my gosh. It's unbelievable. And that's what we're going to start doing more and more is 360 video. I'm telling you, and it's all funded by you. So big round of applause for you guys. Seriously, you're making this happen. All right, I'm going to shut up so I can get to work. All right, I got a lot to do. Thanks for tuning in, as always. Uh, I am Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com. I'll see you live in full 360 video within the hour.